what's up? Well, we're going to be talking about how to target trout and flounder and redfish today here in the late winter, early fall, early spring time period with our fishers. Time of year you have to normally size down all your tackle due to the bait size that's going down and the fact that you don't got big mullets and stuff around and you got a lot of times go to different color patterns and light leaders and stuff so you don't spook out fish when you're casting on so they get spooky this time of year up here in Jacksonville. So we're going to be talking about that today and going over some different color selections and different things to look for to make your choices on your color selections on jigs and plugs today. So Perfect. Hold on one quick second, TJ. We'll flip this around. I went to... Uh, I want to welcome TJ to the Sinker Guy Garage, but number one, this guy's learned from the old salts. This is uh, this is real, real knowledge that a lot a lot of things aren't being passed down anymore. So, uh, listen listen to this. TJ's uh, got tons of information. He's been on our Facebook channel before, but uh, this one's we're going on live just uh, for the pure fact that uh, edit it so a lot more people can see it in the future uh, for all the visitors. But once again, we're here at the Sinker Guy Garage. Teaching starting. Go ahead and get a pen and paper. You're going to need it. And TJ, your own. Okay. These are soft plastics we're going to be starting talking about today. Oh, yeah. Zoom in right here. So we're TJ's got this new uh, Plano box, which is awesome. It's huge. So he's got uh, all the different. Uh, let you talk. Well, we got our traditional plastics here and flukes, a few paddle tails a bunch of paddle tails and we got our z-man plastics over here and we got crustacean style patterns on z-man plastics yeah. over here this is a one that a lot of people do not throw a lot of is the crustacean patterns so one thing people throw sometimes but don't throw a lot so we're going to go over color selection for this time of year you're going to run into two main colors of water this time of year. You're either going to run into really dark, dingy, muddy water, and you're going to want to throw a bright color or a dark color plastic when you're throwing in there. Or you're going to run into crystal clear, gen clear water, and you're going to want to throw a more natural or a really clear, light colored plastic. So, we would throw in a dark colored water we throw a good old root beer and yellow tail, chartreuse tail. Or electric chicken would be another good one to throw in dark, dirty water. Both of those can catch fish in the gen clear water, but they're not going to produce as much. Meanwhile, if we're in crystal clear water, we're going to throw something like this clear blue. Well, I think it's some type of sparkle. Or we're going to throw pearl white. Or we're going to throw a mullet pattern that's more clear colored. The really natural colors work really well this time of year on spooky fish. So spooky reds, spooky trout. Now, a lot of times you have to downsize your baits too this time of year. And then a lot of time, when you do that, I like to go to the swimming trout tricks and stuff. And the slim swims and stuff. There are smaller, skinnier profile than the big minnow Z's and diesel minnows and the full size she shads. Might be about the same length, but they're skinnier profile. That makes sense. So, I'll lay those out like that. So, But there's a flip side of it too of uh, if you're targeting big gator trout in really skinny water where there's no glass minnows or any mud minnows or anything, you have to throw a really big bait and work it really slow. That's where I throw a big old grass kicker up from the Z-Mans or I'll throw a or I'll throw a die dapper from Bass Assassin. These things are big, 
they weigh a bunch, you can throw them really far, and they swim well. They just mimic a really big mullet. So you have to play play the keeps of thought process of do you want numbers or do you want size? Because that big fish, he's going to eat one time in a week in these cold 50, 60 degree water temps. The small fish are going to eat a bunch. So you have to sit there and play your part of what do you want to try to target that day. Do you want to get that one big hero picture of the big giant gator trout? Or do you want to go catch 50, 60 trout in one day? You can also throw crustacean patterns when you're working really slow this time of year. You're fishing a lot of creeks. You have to throw shrimp patterns. We're saying throw shrimp patterns, we mean you're throwing a shrimp and you're letting it drift almost, just barely dragging it. So you'd throw easy shrimp, a DOA shrimp. I like really clear, natural style colors on DOAs and stuff for this time of year and in the spring and late spring, early summer. I like natural colored DOAs, really clear ones. And they work really well this time of year when you're working them slow. But if you got redfish that are spooky, small crawfish patterns. Run them weedless, run them with a small lead head, something on them. Because the reds will eat crabs. No matter what time of year it is, a redfish will eat a crab. If you have a school of really spooky reds, size your tackle down, go to the lightest leader you can get away with, and the smallest lead head you can get away with to throw. This time of year, I would recommend a thousand size spinning combo with the lightest braid you feel comfortable with and a 10 pound or less leader. 15 would be starting to push it for the time of year because it gets really gently this time of year. Another crawl pattern for a bigger crawl pattern for people that don't think the little TRD crawls will work. Another thing, always carry a good selection of colors because you never know what's going to work that day. People that carry one or two colors because it's their favorite color will catch fish. They will have to look a lot harder for those fish. If you have a decent selection of colors and a wider selection of colors, you, can, you have more options to convince the fish to eat. If you come look, I got a bunch of natural and non-natural colors. So, that looks like a mullet. It's got some iridescent colors to it and a lot of sparkle. Same thing with that. That'll end up looking like a mullet in the water. This does not look like a mullet. Best selling color in North America. Caught more trout on it than I want to believe. Another one of those old school colors that I actually do not see people throw anymore. Then you get the stuff like this. This is when they don't want to bite anything and you just decide to throw something different at them to see if they'll bite. You always have to have a few of these <laughs> because the little oddball stuff on really tough days, on really pressured systems will get bites and it will convince fish to come and eat. And it actually scares people when you start to throw a bright yellow bait or a bright orange bait. But another one of those like gen clear colors. Yeah. All those work really well. Really natural setups. Natural color setups work really well too this time of year. So, this is what's been working for me a lot lately. There's that clear blue glitter of a, I think it's a fifth ounce lead head. Throwing on eight pound mono, straight mono on a bait caster. This is a six to 10 T Allen bait caster. And an old school Revo that I've built up and blown up and built up a few times. 
that's been working really well. Forget what color this is from Z-Man on their Easy Shrimp. This works really well this time of year. Just looks like a shrimp floating through there. It's on 10 pound Berkeley X9 braid to 10 pound Seaworks Flora. This has been working really well too. I had a question, TJ. How about Voodoo Shrimp? They work, but you can't put them with anything and you can't put them in a tackle tray. There They're go. worse than the Z-Mans on destroying tackle trays. They will work. I don't like some of the colors. I don't like the actions that much, but with most shrimp patterns, the action doesn't really matter. It's more of a, if it looks like a shrimp and you put it in front of a fish and he's hungry, he's gonna eat it. So that's where I normally will throw a DOA or one of these Z-Man shrimp up there, two styles they have. This is a scented shrimp by Z-Man. Mm. These work really well. You can rig them weedless and throw them up in the grass and stuff. I got two different colors, three colors of those. A lot of times, the little chartreuse tails and stuff will end up getting you a lot of bites too on these really natural colors because it's something for the fish to key into to catch their attention. Same way Chiff and everyone uses floats called pompano fishing. A lot of times you'll see chartreuse tails, orange tails, blue tails, something a little bit different to catch that fish's attention when it pops up off the bottom or something. So, that's one way. Here's, here's some little die dappers, the little three and a half inch die dappers. Oh yeah. These work really, really well on trout when you're around finger mullet because they got an almost perfect mullet profile. You rig these on a two or three aught bass hook or you run them on a little lead head. They swim just like a little mullet. So they'll come in and just destroy them at times. Then some more of the weird stuff like, here's an old school bait for everyone. Mm. Old cocoa hole minnow. This is their pearl and black color. This is an old school color. Everyone's thrown these that have fished for years. These are one of the first paddle tails you could actually buy and fish. Then another thing, size wise, there are times where you have to drop your size way down. Little two inch shad tail. Cannot tell you how many times I've had to drop down to these. To throw these on a 16 ounce lead head, you have to have a little tiny light combo. There are times to where those fish are feeding on glass minnows, little baby pogies, little baby mullet that are an inch and a half, two inches long, and you throw anything bigger than a two inch bait, they're not gonna touch it. They're just keyed in on a certain size bait. And you'll see that a lot of times this time of year. And then there's those random ones like having a zoom trick worm. Old school bait, people have thrown them for years, not talked about. These and the magnum trick worms will catch fish in salt water a lot of times. And people don't like to talk about it too much and then they don't throw it too much until they can't think of anything else to throw. And then it's like, eh, let's try this. That's how I figured it out. Was a, well, nothing else is working, let's throw this color. Here's another really good bait fish pattern. It's got a lot of sparkle and iridescence in it. A lot of iridescence get in these traditional style plastics and the uh, little iridescent glows and stuff and shimmers will a lot of times convince really spooky trout and redfish to actually come up and drill these things. You will see some big blow ups on them in shallow water running them weightless on white rods, working them around oyster beds and you'll get big blow ups on them. But if you don't got them in your box, you're not gonna, find, you're not gonna get bit like that a lot of times. T, uh, another question, Christina has, uh, do you add scent to your baits? 
Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. When I do, it's normally a Pro Cure product because I can apply it right there and it's a gel. With the Pro Cure stuff, everyone's got their favorite flavors. And that's just kind of one of those funky things to where everyone's got their flavors they want to throw. And people just choose what they like. Like, I got some right here of all my lead heads now. Here's all my lead heads and stuff for people. This is all the stuff I throw randomly from 10th ounce and 5th ounce Ned Rig lead heads to 2 aught TTX or Texas Tackle Factory swim bait rigs to run stuff weedless through grass with little screw locks on traditional plastics. I think that's an eighth ounce of a two watt hook. Then I got articulating football heads with four aught bass hooks on them for when I'm running weedless at times around rocks and stuff and docks. Those work really well. Eighth ounce lead heads quarter ounce stuff, mix of them all. I got Trocars, I got Z-Vans, I got Strike King. I got Texas Tackle Factory in here. Let's see. That's the actual Trocar saltwater swim bait head that no one can seem to get their hands on anymore right now. That's a two watt Eagle Claw Trocar jig head hook. On a swim bait style head. They work great. Here's some weighted bass hooks. I throw a lot of these up in the creeks and stuff when I'm fishing flounder and reds. Put one of those in those scented shrimp and I've yet to have a redfish turn off of them. Psyched fish and redfish with them. But another thing is always have a decent selection of lead heads too because there will be times to wear I had to go up to this half ounce swim bait head in high current to get fish to bite. I also throw these in all my spinner baits. Or I might have to go drop down to this little 10th ounce Z-Man head and a little micro bait to get bites. And a lot of people carry maybe an eighth ounce and a quarter ounce head. And that'll be it. And then they'll get in those situations where you physically can't fish because you have too much tide plug. And you can't get to the bottom where the fish are acting anymore. Because the fish this time of year runs slower because it's winter time. They're not moving fast. You have to work baits really slow. We'll get into a lot of that on the plug side too. Where you another thing about plugs. There is not a suspending plug in salt water. Not a single jerk bait was designed for salt water use. None of them suspend. You either got a sinking plug that sinks, or you got a suspending and floating plug that floats. Unless you start playing with hook size, and you start playing with putting lead on them, lead strips, which we're not going to do today because we don't got a bunch of salt water and I didn't bring any of the lead strips with me today to start playing with that. We would need a 30 gallon tank and 30 gallons of salt water to start doing that. And I don't know if anyone wants to go that deep into down the, that far down the rabbit hole. Start sliding some of these back in. Well, so far, hopefully that's, uh, he's answered some good questions. So, uh, the big thing is now we're going to go into the plug box, the plug box which is Boxes. Yeah, more than one. Uh, and look forward to, uh, uh, if you guys have any more questions, uh, just go ahead and put them in the live chat and we'll, uh, we'll keep rolling on it. And, uh, and we'll talk about some of the products that, uh, that TJ uses, uh, exclusively too. So, um, some local companies and obviously it's named local uh, some, few, some local bait shops and and uh, we'll, we'll do all that too so. 
I got a new iPad, so I, I'm looking at the middle of the screen, but there's the thing, so I understand that. Another thing, spend the money and get waterproof boxes. There's nothing more frustrating than not fishing for two weeks and opening up a box and all your hooks are rusted out and having to go through and replace all of that. It gets really expensive really fast. I've learned that over the years. Really quickly over the years. Especially if you're running a plug, a jig box and a plug box. Number one thing, always put them in waterproof boxes. Spend the extra two bucks and get a waterproof tray for them. We're going to play some plugs now and talk about some stuff that may or may not have certain people might think are top secret that are not. Because it's been well established. Trout and reds will eat top waters this time of year. You have to work them slow. If you look at my plug box, I have a mix of colors and sizes. I have some bright colors and top waters. I throw those more around nighttime. And then I have some natural colors for plugs and stuff that are I throw in the middle of the daytime. Deep diving crankbaits work great around rocks. Get out there on the jetties, get out there around the port docks, get out off the corners of all the islands, throw deep diving crankbaits on those drops. They catch fish. As Johnny Carr will put it now, here in a little bit, get all Paul Brown baits. They made an appearance back here in Florida about five, six years ago they started getting big. And everyone started talking about catching all these big trout out in Texas on them. They came over here as corkies and stuff in the late 90s, early 2000s before. So they're nothing new. They've just come and gone two or three different times, depending on who's been winning tournaments out here this way. You got twitch baits, actual twitch baits, not jerk baits. I have one jerk bait in this bin because I didn't have anywhere else to throw it. So, actual twitch baits, these will work great this time of year because they're a pause bait. You have three of your four basic options. I got a fourth one. I got the other two sizes over here, the twitch bait sizes, the big Seville. And then the uh, most untalked about bait there is in Rapala's lineup, the subwalk. This thing, at times, can be the deadliest bait on the planet. At other times, you will not catch anything on it. It's the same <laughs> thing with the Paul Browns. The Paul Browns will either be one of the best baits on the planet for you as a trout angler, or one of the worst baits. They weigh a ton, you can throw them a mile. They have a funky darting action, and they will actually suspend down there at about 18 inches to 24 inches and they'll suspend down there but they don't have a ton of action they come straight if you're not jerking them if you don't impart action in these they just sit there this bait you can walk the dog underwater with it looks good it looks like a big mud minnow they make smaller sizes too I just haven't found the smaller sizes in years. But, same thing with plug colors. You're either going to throw a really natural color in crystal clear water, or you're going to throw something off the wall color wise in really dingy dark water. Like, color I had to hunt for. An actual bait I had to hunt for. This is a clown. Husky Jerk 10, HJ10 by Rapala. These things are absolute deadly on speckled trout all year long. They're one of the few baits that will attempt to suspend in salt water. They will go down there, they will stop, and then start floating up. With a little bit of lead on them, 
that I've not done to this one, the last two I've done it to, I lost in throwing them in fresh water because they sink. You put one little lead strip on these, you can make them truly suspend. And then in certain situations when you're around schools of eight, you can throw these and they will get eight because there's something different about them. A lot of times those big predatory fish are looking for a different bait in the school. So a little dash of red, little dash of yellow, something off a little bit. And that fish will key in on that bait and come up and hit him. One question. Where do you put uh, your salty plugs after you use them? Right back in the box. There you are. They'll dry out. You throw them, you leave them on the rod if you're fishing them and you're catching fish on them. Otherwise, you cut them off. Just make sure you're not getting a lot of rust problems. Use some rust inhibitor. Use really good hooks when you replace your hooks. Another thing, very few companies put good hooks on plugs. Most hooks that come factory on plugs are complete garbage. I have no understanding why, but they put complete and total garbage on some really nice plugs. Mirror lure is one of the main culprits anymore. Strike King does it. A couple other companies will. Like I think, yeah, I've swapped on these already. So Rapala puts really good hooks on their plugs. They run BMC 2X hooks on them. This is a Whopper Plopper 90. This is a deadly bait even this time of year. Fresh and salt water. These have 3X strong trouble hooks on them from the factory. I replaced the hooks on this. This is a Berkeley Juke bait, little jerk bait, 75 mil. Little, little tiny plugs, big plugs. Keep a good selection size-wise of plugs because you never know what size bait you're going to be around. Something this size mimics a glass minnow very well or a little baby, baby mullet. It's not gonna work if you're fishing around six inch mullet. What are your uh, go-to brands of hooks regarding the, the I throw rust? 90% Eagle Claw. Mustad makes some good hooks, but they have a lot of run of bad wire. You'll find out over the years. They'll have two or three runs per year of bad wire on certain styles of hooks. Owner makes a great hook. I think Seaworks is making some hooks now. Owner, Yamakatsu makes some really good hooks. I say mostly of the Eagle Claw hooks because I can buy them in bulk. They're cheap, they work. I bend them, great. Swap them out. That simple. That's how all that works with me. Like, Yozuri's been putting some really good hooks on their plugs lately for the last two, three years. This is a 110 mil Yozuri plug. Like this color, it's got some decent color. It's good and clear, so it'll work really well this time of year in clean, clear water. But it's got just enough yellow and orange tint to it that it'll still work in really dark water too. So a lot of times I'll have to go through and hunt for certain plugs at times to try to find them. Now here's another chrome clown color by Strike King. This is one of the KVD baits. In 110 mil. I throw these when I'm around bigger mullet. Five, six inch mullet. I'm throwing this four and three quarter to a five inch plug around them. Full size spooks. If I'm around a big mullet, or I need to throw a really long distance, full size spoon. These are the one knocks, they come with two hooks, they come with EWGs, which is a really good hook for holding on to big fish that head shake a lot. I like to have a couple bigger plugs in the box because if there's a lot of big baits around, you have to throw a bigger plug or a bigger bait to get the bites. More one knocks and more natural colors. You 
can tell that one's been chewed up a little bit. As you can tell, a lot of times my people that throw lures, you can go look and see how chewed up all their plugs are. If they throw plugs a lot. Like I got a bunch of newer stuff that's just little stuff. This is a, I think this is a shadow wrap. This is one of their funky little like muted colored bait fish patterns. Here's another shadow wrap. Yeah, another husky pair. triple hook plugs some days. They, they get bites and they hold on to fish, but they're a pain to get and store in your box. That's a shadow wrap in one of their metallic pearlescent colors that work really well at times. They suspend. These are labeled a slow sinking bait. They suspend in salt water at times, and then they'll float. So you physically have to buy a sus sinking bait to make it suspend in salt water. The salt water's heavier. Here's another husky jerk, size 10. These things are, before the x wraps these were the, your best trout bait. I got some x wraps over here, the smaller sizes. It seems like you either go with the small size or you go straight to the big ones anymore that you throw offshore and troll around offshore. Jamal wanted to know what type of bag that was. Plano Guide Series. It's the big 3700 Pro Guide Series bag. It's the XL. It's got built-in rod holders. Each one of these smaller pockets holds a 3600 size tray. So what most people carry for tackle. This holds three of those and seven 3700 size trays. If you want to look. It holds multiple 3600 size trays in these. I have 35 over here and a couple liter spools in there because it doesn't have anywhere to put liter spools. Got my lead tray over here. That shows you it's a 3600 size. Always buy the waterproof bag boxes. Saves you money in the long run. They spend a little bit more money at the time when you're buying the box. And he said a surprising amount of trays. And that holds. Yeah. Holds a couple more there. Hold another one there. Hold seven up top. All right, now I got five in it. The two on the desk. And it's got a backpack. Got backpack uh, straps. Straps. Backpack straps for it, so you don't have to just carry it on one shoulder. This thing sucks to carry any distance on one shoulder, royally, because with how I got it set up, it's about 70 pounds right now. It's got a drop zone, so still holding on. <laughs> still holding on. It'll hold your hooks. It'll hold pliers. Hold knives. It'll hold a knife. I mean, it'll hold your keys. I don't know if you want to throw electronic keys up there. Magnet <laughs> might mess with them. I don't know. Liking the bag so far. I bought it in December. It's a water resistant outer. It's got a waterproof base. So it's got a hard rubber base. So when you set them on the deck of a boat and the water washes up, it don't soak your bag from the bottom up. Your bag doesn't wick moisture up itself the whole day and then rust out everything. Learn that one over the years. Don't do that. So TJ, what? Uh, let's talk about watercolor and uh, and and bait choice. Okay, really gen clear water. If you have small baits around, you try to throw small baits that are natural colors, so very muted colors. So. We'll say a chrome and blue rapala, white sabeel or something that's almost see-through, nearly see-through baits like this, the clear blue glitter, glimmer. 
you downsize your baits right now because there's not a lot of bait in the river or anything. So you have some shrimp in the river still showing up and around. They'll always eat shrimp. One of those things. If you're up in the back creeks and you got a lot of big mullet, a big mullet pattern, big mullet colors. A lot of times if you're fishing up and you go up and you look for a big mud flat on a low tide in the mid-afternoon and then fish it on the incoming because big gator trout and snook will go lay up on those mud flats. They're not going to want to eat. You're going to have to throw something in front of them and work it really slow in their face. And it better be a big bait they can't turn down. Big paddle tail, big sub, big sub walk. These hooks are sharp. You throw a big spook up there around them. If you're around really clean, clear water, you throw really natural bait colors. If you're in dark, dingy water, you throw really bright colors or really dark colors something the fish can see. Doesn't matter, top water, diving plug, doesn't really matter in that case. You have to throw something the fish can see. You have to throw something really bright or really dark in dark water. Another bait that almost no one throws in salt water anymore. That all the old school tournament guys will tell you to throw. Wake baits. Get up next to a grass line, get a baby one minus. This is a DT fat one. Strike King makes a couple wake baits. Rappel makes a couple. Man still makes a few. There's a few companies that still make wake baits. They work great for redfish. It's one of those funky patterns that no one really throws anymore. They all went to the MR17, the Mirodine. These are Eagle Claw 3X hooks on this one. I can't stand the stock mirror lower hooks. I literally bend them, taking them out the package half the time. Another thing this time of year, because it's winter time. Throw deep diving crankbaits around rocks in deep water. You will find big redfish and big trout around them. I don't have any of the big, big 6XDs and stuff. Mostly because they just don't fit in trays well. You'd have to get a deep tray and then run it as a big deep diving only tray. I've not done that. This is a Rapalus DT16 or DT10, sorry, in a shad color. This will catch trout, reds around rocks. It'll catch bluefish and stuff around rocks too as bycatch that you don't want. I have a Rappel deep diving dirt bait here. This is a deep diving shadow wrap 11. This thing's almost five inches long without the bill. And then it's another inch and a half of the bill. This will dive down to about 10, 12 foot. Throw stuff like this, lighter rods at times, or you throw it on a medium heavy rod if you're out on the jetties on 20, 30 pound on the big deep diving cranks just to get them down and you got to get them down there and dig when you get a big red like that you have to put heat on him yes you can catch a big red fish on something like this little thousand size spinning rod people have done it a billion times i've done it try not to do it in deep water especially where there's current you're going to kill the fish Go to a three, four, five thousand size, so twenty or thirty pound braid, or another Revo on a heavier bait caster on 15, 20 pound mono. Crank the drag down. You can put a lot more heat than you think on these fish, on these hooks, on this tackle. If you hook a big red, crank down on him. Do not give him the light of day to turn and burn because he will fight himself to death. There's nothing worse than trying to spend an hour reviving a big bull red because he won't swim off. 
Also, venting half the time doesn't work. You end up damaging the fish's swim bladder. Much more beneficial to revive them properly and not vent them. Or get a one of the devices that hook into their jaw that drop them down there until they're at a certain depth and then releases. Or one of the little spike setups that you can pick back up and pop up and pull it back out their jaw. After you send them down there on a big ball of lead. Those work every time. Canning balling them, just dropping them head first into the water works about 25% of the time. 75% of the time that fish is going to float. Venting them will get them down there, but they can't do anything but sit on the bottom until their swim bladder heals. They can move short distances, but they can't balance themselves out. That's what their swim bladder is. It's to equalize them in the water. Don't damage them. Just get them eaten by sharks. Well, let's wrap this up, TJ. What, do you, what else you got to tell them out there? This time of year, if you're going to fish bait, fish a bottom rig or fish a float rig. Fish finder rig with anything from a one to three ounce, depending on current, dead shrimp, mud minnows, doesn't really matter. You're going to find fish here and there. Learn your area. Get out there and fish it that you're going to fish. You have to figure out, is it a morning spot? Is it an evening spot? Is it an afternoon spot? Is it a high tide spot or low tide spot? Is it gonna be the first two hours of incoming or the last two hours of outgoing? You gotta find those things out. Do they want it on the top of the tide or the bottom of the tide to eat? You have to put your time into the areas to learn them to catch fish at them at their fullest potential. Doesn't matter where you're at, you could be on the beach, you could be 60 miles offshore. You could be in Green Cove. Learn your areas. You have to work on it. You have to put time in to learn the areas, to learn them. And catch fish at them and excel at catching fish at them. After you learn them, you can start catching fish at them all year long most of the time. Very few areas hold fish for just one time period of the year. Now, a lot of spots can be an afternoon or an evening spot. Shoot, I got some spots that they don't produce unless it's after midnight. They'll produce from midnight till about 3 a.m. Doesn't matter the tide out of them either. There's just no boat traffic on them, so you can actually go fish them and the fish will actually be biting at those times. So there's a lot of areas like that that are just these funky spots that you have to learn them. You're going to have a one, two, three hour tide window to catch fish in them. And that's going to be it. After you figure out that tide window and figure out that spot, you can go catch a ton of fish in them. And then from there you learn What's the bottom line? What type of lead head do I got to throw? How deep of a lead head? How heavy of a lead head do I got to throw in that spot? What type of bait's in that spot for me to throw what bait at that time of year? That's all just little stuff that everyone has to learn over time. It's a trial and error thing. You have to just learn, 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 and pay attention. If you're catching fish one day on a bottom of the outgoing tide and you go back out there and it's the top of the incoming and you don't catch anything and the next time you go out there it's the bottom of the outgoing and you catch fish more than likely going to be a bottom of the outgoing tide spot that there are a lot of spots like that I have spots to where I wait fish a ton I physically will have to wait out at certain tides to certain areas to fish holes out there on the main river. There will be a spot that it'll have a little three foot bar in there with a gap between two oyster bars or two shell bars out there, a hundred yards out, be two foot deeper in this little hole that's the size of this garage. 
but you got to wait out there at a certain tide for them to be laid up in that hole eating. Otherwise, they're spread out everywhere. Same thing with fishing creeks. Same thing fishing draw balls. The fish are going to stage up on them different ways on different parts of the tide. Full fledged, full current, you're more than likely not going to catch much in the river. It's been running two and a half to four knots in the main river on a tide side. You're not going to catch much in that. Fish your high tide, fish the top of the tides and the bottom of the tides. You're going to have a two, three hour window there on either side to target fish. Another little thing that's awesome for redfish and stuff this time of year when they get really, really spooky is these little uh, top pups. I mean, these little uh, zero puppies. You'll get redfish and stuff up in the creeks that they'll come up and they'll wake a full, they'll wake a spook junior or a full size spook, but they won't hit it. And then you throw one of these in there and you just twitch it about five or six times, they'll come up and chomp it. Because they're keyed in on a certain size bait. They see something this size and they think it's another predator fish chasing a little two inch bait. They see something this size and think it's the bigger version of the little bait that they're chasing. And they'll come up and eat it. So a lot of times you have to downsize in the winter. You have to work baits a lot slower in the winter too. These fish are cold 50, 60 degrees. Certain species thrive in it. Whiting, pompano, black drum, love it. Redfish tolerate it. Snook hate it. Trout will tolerate it and enjoy it some. So, a lot of times you have to downsize, you have to play with what's in the area and mimic what's in the area. Perfect. Any, Any other questions? No, no more. And I thank you for coming on and sharing. I see a chunk ton of teeth marks and stuff in that oh, yeah. hopper. Well, TJ, thanks for coming out and uh, sharing with us here at the Sinker Guy Garage and look forward right. to uh, seeing a bunch more uh, posts out there on uh, Facebook. And and what uh, what's that uh, Facebook group you have, TJ? Uh, Northeast Florida Fishing Report. There we are. So you can follow. He, uh, he posts a lot on there and uh, really good uh, local knowledge here in Jacksonville. So if you guys need anything else. Let's try to get it up there a little bit more. Yeah. Get some more posts for Yep, and uh, TJ catches fish. He he, uh, he he shows me up every time I go fishing. So all this yeah, stuff is still gotta go play out in the surf one of these days yeah. <laughs> and really see. Yeah, gotta go play in chips. Domain. Yeah, my own. My domain of being inshore. Yeah, so go ahead and find TJ on online and and uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and get on his Facebook channel and we'll chat chat soon. Okay. Thanks, guys.